This is a demonstration of the recently completed incrementer cards. The incrementer is the last of the double cards, as it's mostly single register cards from here on in. Right, let's get stuck in with a quick tour of the cards. And I'll start by flipping the cards over. And it's fairly usual stuff on this side of the cards. You've got the ground rails, uh, both in bare metal and in grey. And the power lines in red stroke orange. OK, let's flip back to the front. And if we go down to the front of the right hand card, we can see the lower card LEDs. So there are 16 red ones, which show the incremented value. And effectively, this is whatever value is on the address bus, plus one. OK, let's head off to the upper card, where we find some more LEDs. And just as with the lower cards, we have 16 red ones, but this time we've got an additional yellow one on the left and a green one on the right. This pattern should look reasonably familiar. Yep, it's another register. And this time we're using it to hold on to the incremented value produced by the lower card. And this register is necessary because the lower card is permanently attached to the address bus. If we connected the other side to the address bus, it'd just carry on feeding itself forever, reaching an infinite loop and probably destroying the world. Or the relays at any rate. Anyway, enough of LEDs. Let's get over to the business end of the lower card. And it's here where we find the 16 bits half adder. Why half adder? Well, that's because it's only taking one input rather than the usual two. There's a full adder in the ALU, which takes the B and C register and adds them together. Here, though, we're only taking the address bus as a 16-bit value and then adding one to it. And the increment's effectively achieved by setting the carry in permanently to one. OK, so we've got our incremented value. Now we need to ship that off to the upper card. And we'll do that using the card connects. And here you can see bits 1 through to 16, or rather I0 through to IF, and these get transferred off up to the upper card at the same location. So the incremental values made it to the upper card, now it's time to store that value in a register. And this register isn't a million miles away from the ones already in the computer, it's very similar, effectively just two 8-bit registers joined together with some slightly different gating. Towards the front of the card are the 16 1-bit register relays each one capable of holding one bit of the 16-bit value. To the right of those are the gating relays. At the top and bottom are the inbound gating relays, which gate the incremental value coming up from the lower card. In the middle are the outbound gating relays, and these gate the 16-bit value held in the register off out to the address bus. Finally at the right are the two control relays, and these handle the selecting and loading of the register. OK, so that's all the relays covered. Let's take a look at those connectors along the top of the card. And this is a pair of Type X cards. So starting from left to right, we have the X control bus, the address bus, the data and instruction bus, and finally the power connector. OK, and for the last time, let's head off to the lower card, where we find exactly the same connectors. Again, a Type X card, so no surprises there. Right, that's the cards pretty much covered, so let's get on and give them a test. Now, because of that simple interconnect between the cards, it's actually quite easy to test them individually. And I'm going to start with testing the half adder on the lower card. Right, let's pop some power on. And we can see that the first bit is set, which is as expected, because nothing plus one is one. Right, let's start setting some bits on the address bus. Looking good. Right, OK. Now, if I transfer that display cable over to the upper 8 bits, like so, I should be able to see the overflow carry through to bit 8. Lovely. OK, now let's switch those switches over to the upper 8 bits as well, and then we can have a play with those.
Okay, I'm happy with that. That'll do for the lower cards. Right, let's take a look at that upper card. And a slightly different setup now, as it's the upper cards register we're now testing. As before, let's get some power going. And nothing happens, but that's fine for a register. Right, let's get some bits set on the switch. And you can see that's connected to the incoming incrementer card connect. So there we go, loading and selecting a value in the register. And that looks good. Okay, now let's transfer the cable over to the upper 8 bits, just as we did on the lower card. And then we can try loading some values in the upper 8 bits. And to display that value in the upper 8 bits, we need to move the cable over on the bar graph display. That's it, Paul. In your own time. No rush. Tremendous. OK, that all works as it should do. Let's move on. Right, so we've got the incrementer installed on the computer, and it can be found right here. And what I should be able to show now is passing the value between the incrementer and the program counter, effectively making the program counter count up. But of course, I can't do that without any power, so let's sort that out right now. And the pattern goes like this. Select PC, load incrementer. Select incrementer, low PC. PC to incrementer, incrementer to PC. You get the idea. There we go, program counter is now at 8. OK, so with that all looking to be working just fine, it's time to do something a little bit more interesting. In my last video, where I was testing the memory cards, I entered a little program. Here it is. And little it is indeed. Just four instructions long. And if you've not seen it before, it's just going to add two and four together and put the result, six of course, into register A. Now last time, I had to manually crank the program counter. But of course this time I've got an incrementer to do that for me, so it should be a little bit easier. Anyhow, let's bring back the computer. And I can start by popping the first instruction into memory location 0. And with that done, I can now push the program counter on by 1. I can now pop the next instruction into memory location 1. I can now repeat the process for the last two instructions. And there we go, the program's now in memory. Let's verify that. All as expected. So we might as well finish off by hand running the program through the computer.
And there we go, all run through just as expected. So I'm getting pretty damn close now to a computer that can run a program all on its own. And effectively all I need to do now is just add the fetch and increment cycle that I've been doing here by hand to the controller cards. But that's something for next time. As always, more information can be found at my blog, relaycomputer.blogspot.co.uk and feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.